likes me. Yeah. Um, she has. Yeah. Um, apparently, they met her in their building, five pounds for uh Hello, everybody! Yeah. So, did everyone have a good time at opening ceremonies? Yeah! Woo. Did you all have fun going down to the vendor hall so far? Yeah! I haven't been there yet. But I know the main reason why you're here. Yeah. You want to meet the designer and the stars of My Little Pony Generation 5, right? Woo. Now, this is going to be a big panel, lots of questions, big, big stars, and... You know, I think this is actually a really big responsibility. I don't think I can do this alone. I mean, sure, I've interviewed lots of other people alone, but I really don't think I can do this alone. I think I need a partner. Uh, Marina, what do you think? Marina? Hello, cute. Oh! Hello, Fred, what are you doing here? I'm stealing your spotlights, literally, with my jackets. Never fell. Yeah! Well, it's not hard for to do. <laughs> Continuity. Right, so, everyone here ready to meet the voice actors? Woo! Yes. I think it's only appropriate that we start out with the brightest ball of sunshine for My Little Pony Gen 5. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenna Warren! Woo! She likes lots of sparkles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Suni. Woo! And of course, these two characters wouldn't be here without the person who actually designed them. Ladies and gentlemen, Leia Dubsey! Woo! Dad? Dad, homie. All right, yes. Excellent. All right, welcome you three. Thank you for coming to this convention. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. And because you're present, I'd like to give some presents. Oh, presents. Presents? Oh, yes. Welcome to the back. I wonder what these would be. This, this is why the inmates run the asylum here. <laughs> Isn't that right, Marina? Leia Imelu. Yeah. Design projects are never easy. They're tight deadlines, lots of stress, yeah. unicorns in your sleep, maybe. <laughs> well, now we have the way to relieve that stress. I give you the stretchy unicorn. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh, I need that. I need that. <laughs> and now, for the voice actress of a, a very hyper energetic unicorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the embodiment and the sole representative of the unicorns. I believe that you need an army. <laughs> and so I give unto you the game, Unstable Unicorns. Oh my god. Ooh. Wait, I've heard of this game. This looks so okay. And I love, I love board games and all that stuff. So. Oh, really? Right. So this is build an army, betray your friends. Unicorns are now your friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. 
you, thank you. Pleasure. And for Sunny Star Scout, the leader of the Sparkle Squad. I love that. Bringer of light and also turns tidal waves into sparkles. That's right. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Not wrong. I give you the magic jar kit, which you can change into your own mood lighting. Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Thank you! Okay, this will be updating every single day. <laughs> yeah, this, this will be good. The people will want to will be able to know. Yeah, I move very quickly. Good. Yeah, based Excellent. on glitter. Mine would change multiple times a day. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm mad. <laughs> Grr. <laughs> You never get that. Um, you can set us up silver if you want. <clears throat> All right. Well, we have a very wonderful opportunity here because we have both the designer and the voice actresses of these characters. And so I wonder, starting with Emily, when you're designing the character, do you envision how they're going to sound? Does that influence? Oh gosh, I kind of think think about it. Um, when I was designing the characters, we had actually um, a PDF with the voice actors that they wanted to have. So um, I, I had to search for these voice actors uh, past work, mm -hmm. and I had to work with that. So, kind of, yeah. That's uh, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how it worked on, on the show. Like, we, we had these big fives of, we want this type of actor, she worked on this, and so you can, you can watch. So, for example, for Kimiko Glenn on the movie, um, I watched some bits of Orange is in Black of her Perfect. character in it, so I can envision who she is in the show. So, yeah. That's so yeah. <laughs> and then we move to the other side of the direction. The characters are, have been designed or in the stage. They're being animated. And our, we now have our voice actresses. When you look at a character, does something click in the head to say, this is how I think they'd sound? Or an impression you get in your mind? Jenna? I mean, definitely. But at the same time, there's a lot of times where we are auditioning for things and we have no idea what the character looks like. So based off the description you get, you kind of have to imagine yourself how you think they would look or feel or act and but when you do get a visual it definitely helps because uh -huh. you know it it's all encompassing yeah like i had no idea what izzy looked like when i auditioned for her so that was exciting i mean i had some idea you had yeah. some idea <laughs> you knew i was a little late past party, party. yeah 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 you saw some pictures of a character before no 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 no, no. no we just got uh, i just got a character description uh -huh. of what they were kind of looking for and then i went into the audition and gave my take on what i thought the character that is was. so funny because yeah. the movie was oh we before. were no 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 yeah, it's a big misconception no. yes yeah 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 so yeah we were cast we i was i was cast before the movie came out yeah so oh, no way yeah yeah, and then I was brought on after, so there was like, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So that There's actually, that. <laughs> so that actually brings up our next question. Uh, what was the process of actually assuming these roles from the movie, since it seems like it was actually very complicated, actually. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, what was it like to actually assume the roles of Izzy and Sunny ah. from the movie? Because it seems like it was actually a very complicated process with you being cast before and you being cast after. Yeah, well, you know what? They did an amazing job because I feel like they took the essence of who the characters were and they found matches. Um, and it, it worked out, I thought, really great. Like, I feel like everyone sounds awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was... It... Do you have any thoughts on that, Jenna? I mean, yeah, because when I was doing my audition process, was, which was months after um, Anna, the movie came out. So I was drawing a lot of inspiration from Vanessa because... I was like, oh my gosh, am I, like, I'm Vanessa Hudson? Like, whoa, what's going on here? So I definitely, with my take on my audition process, I definitely took a lot of inspiration from her. And then as the audition process kind of went on, they kind of liked my own voice a little bit more than how I was sort of really trying to emulate Vanessa. So it was like sort of a process of, here, let's try this, let's try this. And then we came to sort of the sound of Sunny. Um, yeah, I definitely was really intimidated at first, having a, another voice already established and out there, um, and then coming on and being like, hey, so it's me now. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting. Yeah. You know, I think you just gave a, a prompt to all the musicians in the fandom, the sound of Sunny. Can we get that name? 
Yeah. 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 Sunny, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That must... Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, and like, you know, watching Kumiko, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so amazing. Slay! She's so very good. Um, yeah, so it was, it, I felt really honored to, to be taking, uh, you know, taking part as Izzy and kind of taking her character and, and shifting it and making it a little bit my own, but also taking some of her essence. So it's it's been an awesome journey. Yeah, I believe it, but also every journey seems to have a beginning somewhere, so... Question for all three on the panel: What was your first ex what was your first experience with the My Little Pony franchise? Who starts me? Yes. All right. Well, me that was G four. Well, no, I watched the show when I was a kid, the G two show or the G three. I don't quite remember, but I was playing with the toys. But I've been a brownie since two thousand eleven, actually. So. Wow! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, but the, the first episode I watched of G4 was uh, Pinkie Pie with Zekora, the Zekora one. And, and, and I fell in love with Pinkie Pie <laughs> instantly. Yeah. And you? Um, my first experience was, well, I was working on something and I had heard of the voice actress Andrea Lippin. And uh, I just looked her up and I saw she was part of My Little Pony. and. I watched a couple episodes, so I was in for G4, and I watched a few episodes of that. That was my kind of first experience of watching My Little Pony. She's so awesome. <laughs> oh, and she does, like, both the characters, and they're so uniquely different. Yeah. Yep. Mm. She's such a talent. <laughs> She's here. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, my first experience, I watched the show when I was younger, and my mom's a kindergarten teacher, and so she had some, like, My Little Pony figurines that I would play with, um, and then when I got the audition, um, for Sunny, I was staying with my baby cousins in Vancouver, and I was like, hey, you want to watch, um, My Little Pony New Generation? She thought I was the coolest cousin ever. <laughs> we watched it, like, three times that weekend nice. as I was preparing, um, and so then that's when I sort of got reintroduced. Uh, to this to this world. Yeah, My Little Pony making cousins cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, Marina? Yeah. She agrees. <laughs> I have uh, just some individual questions, and then I think we'll open up to general questions from the floor. Absolutely, sounds good to me. Excellent. Jed, on top of uh, what I like to call human malware from 2020 on now. That's always been a uh, burden on issues, but you also manage that, and you have uh, type one diabetes. Yeah. How does that play into your career, and what advice might you have for for people who want to, well, become voice actors, but also worry may have to face diabetes? Yeah, definitely. Well, I was first diagnosed with diabetes when I was 16 years old, um, and ever since that, the first thing I said to my dad when I was diagnosed, well was, well, it's a good thing I'm always up for a challenge, so that's always how I've sort of looked at it. It's just a part of who I am, just like how some people have glasses or some people have long hair. It's just a part of me. It's not who I am. Um, and I'm a very, very dedicated, passionate person with everything I do. And just because I got diabetes, that didn't mean that I was going to stop anything that I was doing. It wasn't, I was not going to let it hold me back at all. If anything, it pushed me further to prove that, you know what, I can still do this and I'm going to do it better now. And honestly, it's sort of, you know, it, it's it's a blessing and a curse because, you know, um, I have a really wonderful um, community surrounding me. Like the, the diabetes community is wonderful. Um, and also it keeps me very like in line. Like I have goals and I want to reach them and I have to be on top of, you know, my glucose levels to make sure that happens. Um, and so my advice to people, you know, if you have a chronic illness or a disease, still do everything that you want to do like it, it, it shouldn't I mean there's challenges with that of course but don't let it stop you from doing what you wanted to do before you were before you were diagnosed you can still do everything and you're kind of a superhero afterwards and Anna yes. as I 
understand, you're a part of not one, but two sketch comedy troops. Oh my gosh! Have either of them tried to claim you now that you're a magical pastel horse? Yes. That was sketch. Okay. <laughs> you did your research. Wow. Um, wow. Okay, so I joined these two sketch troops years ago uh, through my actors' union. I just decided to, this was before TikTok, okay? And we would create these one minute ridiculous sketches that, you know, actually, we actually got, got some interest from some pretty big uh, companies, which was really cool. But, um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, part of it is if any of tried to claim you, but uh, oh, did, that ex did their exper the experience of those troops help with figuring out how to portray Izzy. Yeah, totally. Because right. uh, sketch comedy is improv. And I put a lot of improv into it. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put a lot of improv into Izzy. Um, and I think that definitely helped with that. But um, yeah, those sketch troops. Honestly, okay, I'll, okay, one of them I wrote. <laughs> Word to your mother is what it's called. And um, they're such goofy little things. But they were a blast, and honestly, I would do I, I would do like seasons and seasons of that because when you're when you're up on stage and you're just free improvising comedy, there's nothing more delightful than that. Like it just it feels freeing. It feels like I could just be myself, my goofy weirdness, and nothing's judged until it's online. Then you're like, oh god. But. <laughs> um, I love it. I, I can't believe we're bringing up that. That's crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to message my friend Sydney. She's the other part of it. Oh. <laughs> She's going to be like, oh. <laughs> is, is there any place we can see these sketches? Yeah, they're on YouTube. They're on YouTube. They have like five views, but it's oh. Oh. Uh, We can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly. Yep. They literally have like ten views. They're ridiculous, guys. They're ridiculous. <laughs> what, what's the YouTube channel for me? Word to your mother. Word, Word to your mother. Oh, there's a saint. Word to No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, spread the word. We need to build, we need to make this YouTube channel explode. Yes. <laughs> spread the word to your mother. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check, yes, um, check the channel about three hours. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah. no. He's going to have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Over here? So, show of hands, who's already starting to share the YouTube oh. channel right now? <laughs> What happened? This was before TikTok. It, oh, it was okay. before yeah. TikTok. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Relax, we're bronies. There's nothing more cringe than us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, Leia, Ibanu. Yes. I had the, the great pleasure of talking with you when Babscon could only do an online uh, uh, online stream interview. Yeah. And we, at the time, there were things you couldn't talk about because the movie hadn't even premiered yet. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So, was there any anecdotes, ideas, or, or stories you wanted to tell that you just couldn't before the movie, and now they've, they've been yeah. holding in? I know you held the secret you were working on this project yeah. for like seven years. Yeah, uh, no, not seven years. So, well, I, was, I started working on G5 in 2017. So Late 2017, and uh, yeah, I had to keep my, my mouth shut for like oh. five years. Oh God! <laughs> but um, uh, at that time, uh, what I couldn't tell, but is no, but nobody, everybody knows now. <laughs> but we were supposed to make uh, a sequel of the first My Little Pony G4 movie at first, oh. and then there was the another project. But this project turned to be a G5 project, and then this G5 project was the main six, but they were different. And uh, so Pinkie Pie was a Pegasus, um, uh, Fluttershy was a unicorn, uh, Twilight Sparkle was a half, an half pony, uh, and they wow. moved this project to the G5 actual project. <laughs> so there was a lot of changes that was made, and. Uh, but I couldn't tell at that time because uh, I was—I didn't know if it was able to, to, to say. But um, in the end, uh, my co
colleagues put some concept arts about it, and uh, I did put mine, and people were freaking out online <laughs> because I put the, the G4, the G5, G4 version. Mm. And uh, but no, no, everybody knows this secret, so it doesn't feel like a secret anymore, you know. <laughs> um, what, what else? I think that's it. I don't quite remember what we were talking about during this interview, actually. <laughs> well, so it's, it's been two years. It's, it's been two years. There's been a lot of life. Already, already two a lot of life. Oh my god. That means these last two years. Yeah. Hey, huh? And yet, at the same time, it seems that these last two years have kind of stood still. Yeah, like, I feel like I, I did a jump in time. <laughs> like, we, so, we're, we're bringing on big boot here. Got to let, hello, Sunny, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to watch your show again. <laughs> Still counting on you, fan musicians. So uh, I think now's a great time to open things up to the audience. I believe it is, indeed. So if everyone here who has any questions, uh, could you please line up in the center aisle, please? And I'll be right down to take them. Yeah. <laughs> As I understand, this is your second convention, your first, your second, oh my god, I got mixed up, my bad. Oh, second as well. Oh, okay. yeah. How are you having fun so far? Yeah. Excellent. Oh my god, cons are the best. All right. Yeah. So much fun. All right, you're, you're after our own hearts here. Hi. Uh, so, first of all, I just wanted to thank Jenna for her uh, words about uh, chronic illness and encouragement. So, thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, my question is for all three of you. Uh, as our Griffin friend said, uh, nobody does cringe better than Bruni. We're cringe and we're free. But uh, so, I would like to know what is your uh, personal? What's your Cringiest or nerdiest or geekiest interest that you have outside of Pony? Oh, God. <laughs> I have too many. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. What's your guilty pleasure? Oh, God. Should I go first? Because yeah, I already know. <laughs> I play League of Legends oh. Oh. every day for at least two hours. Wow. Every day. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. And it's the last thing I do before I go to bed. That's the cringiest thing I ever heard. It is. It is. I've been playing since the beta. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's my thing. I feel like I do so many things, but I can't like think of it on the spot. Um, it's not cringy, but like my guilty pleasure. It's not even a guilty pleasure because I'm not ashamed. I love... Like old Disney cartoons Woo! and Disney Woo! movies. Like, yeah, like, I'm not that old. I don't know. Like, I love Kim Possible and Phineas and Ferb and, like, I don't know. I just, yeah, Sunday cartoons are every morning for me. I, I, yeah. I love Disney cartoons with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. They're the modern classics. Thank you. Exactly. You get me. Exactly. I have so many myself. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I'm a furry. Woo! <laughs> But um, I like I like wolves. I like draw, drawing wolves. I was part of a wolf fandom wow. ten years ago. Wow. <laughs> uh, I do play cringy game as well. Like I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Counter Strike. Heck yeah, oh. Counter Strike. <laughs> I, I do play Counter Strike a lot. A lot. And four guys are so. <laughs> oh, guys. I like this kind of games, and I'm a big anime fan. Uh, my favorite anime, I, I've been watching this anime like 20 times. Uh, it's been Card Captor Sakura. Oh my god! I love Card Captor. I love Card Captor. My, my cat so is good. named. My cat name is Shaolan because of Card Captor. So good, so good. I love Naruto. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Okay. I love shoujo anime. I love shoujo anime. Uran School is Club, do you Yeah! Oh my goodness! When I was a teenager, my kids' bundle was Tamaki. Death Note, One Piece. Oh gosh, just so good. So yeah, that's a big list. Thank you very much. That was a great question. Thank you. Now I just want to go home with my knee. Oh my god, I'm obsessed, you guys. <laughs>
<laughs> this convention is not sponsored by League of Legends or Counter Strike. <laughs> However, if they be open not again. Real. Two quick questions for, for both of you. Do you do the singing for the characters? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay, so Verona, what was it like singing what amounted to a love song to trash? T R I S doesn't mean it's ways. I love the story. I received the email, the demo. And I was, you know, after a game of League, I was, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a problem. I actually am obsessed. Um, okay, so I, I opened it up, and I was like, okay, let's see. See that it's called For the Love of Trash. I'm like, okay. Listen to the song. I'm like, wow, okay. We're going all out. Um, but my sister, she was upstairs. She comes downstairs. She goes, this is bumping. <laughs> she goes, what is this? Because it has a like Gwen Stefani vibe to it. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I'm like, yeah, it's really great. Listen to the music, like listen to the lyrics. She goes, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. But going in for the session was amazing. Like, oh my gosh. Aaron and Jesse, they're so they're talented. They're amazing. They lead our, our music sessions. And they were just like, yeah, channel Gwen, go wild. Okay, we're gonna go for like a more dramatic version. Okay, now let's do a subtle version. Let's do a screamo version. <laughs> they let me go all out with Izzy. Like they don't, yeah, yeah. I do scream, but like I do. How does it sound? <laughs> it's intense. Um, yeah, we do all of it. And then they, they mix and match and they find what works for the song. But it was such a, such a great song. Oh my no, gosh. Thank you. Thank you. So I really love board games, but at, um, at Weedy City, Jen and I um, managed to confirm that there is a time and a place for video games, and then there are other times. <laughs> yes. But uh, what I have a question for you is what, if any, board games, card games, more physical, or improv or whatever kind of games that are not video games. Twister. <laughs> oh. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. For all of us? Yeah, all of us. Oh. Well, there are lots. I love board games. I do as so. well. Pandemic is very Woo! I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've played that in three years. <laughs> I think we're all experts in Yeah, that. That, that was a scarring game. Uh, no, but that was really fun. That was a great one. Um, Exploding Kittens. Ooh. Oh, I love that one. Such a good one. Um, oh my gosh. Avalon. Avalon. Uh, no? Yes. <laughs> yes, Avalon. Avalon's awesome. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know if it's a board game, but lately, it's been like six months, I am obsessed with Mahjong. Ooh. Oh yeah! Which yeah. yeah. match of the Japanese version I play every day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, exploding kittens. Uh, do you know the, the game Bang, the cowboy game? No. Maybe that's a French one actually. I think. Yeah. Um, I have seen it. Uh, I love Uno. But yeah. uh, I, have the, I have a pony version of a Uno. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, it's my favorite. How did you get that? That's so cool. In a convention, someone gave it to me. I was like. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but Magic, I love Magic. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. play Magic right now. I think <laughs> so, guys, I'm gonna seriously introduce these three to Prance. <laughs> Let's make that a goal for this convention. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Like, did, did you draw, did you want to channel Son of Pinky's energy into his character? And I, the same thing goes for Channel, like, did you draw any, uh, did you get any inspiration from any Channel H4 characters who are sent to character? That's a great question. Thank you. Um, first of all, Pinkie Pie is so much fun. Like, she's just so wild and crazy. She's my baby. Yeah, she's so cute and fun. Um, Izzy, definitely, there are aspects I think you can, they're very comparable. Well, they, I designed Izzy to, as if it was a bit of Pinkie Pie. So. There we go! Yeah. So there we go. And, you know, reading the prompts, the, you know, the casting, the high energy, the bubbliness, the hyperactive. How could you not think of Pinkie Pie, you know? Yep. So those were aspects, aspects were there. But there are different aspects that Izzy has. She's <laughs> very creative. She loves to craft. She has like a, a, a newness about the world. She does it, she wants to explore the world. She wants to make a ton of friends. Um, she's never had close friends before. So those nuances, that kind of shies her away from Pinky, making her Izzy, you know? Yeah. But definitely, definitely. You know, I keep reading the prompts, I'm like, okay, I can, I can feel some of Pinky here, but how do we make it our own, you know? I wasn't trying to say that, like, it's, no, no, it's no. just a carbon copy. Yeah. No, I, I just meant my inspiration. Yeah, exactly. And yes, you're, the, the answer to your question is for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure, yeah. Um, China, well. Yeah. For myself, um, since Sunny was already sort of out there when I did my audition process, I definitely drew inspiration from how Vanessa did her take. But then also Twilight Sparkle, her, her leadership quality, I really wanted to embody that with Sunny as well. Also keeping in mind of how this is a different, she's different, I didn't want anything to be the same or think that I'm copying anything, you know, because this is a brand new, that's something that I really wanted to make sure is the, Pardon? Not quite a book war. Yeah, that's right. No. Yeah, she, yeah, more of a smoothie girl, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely like leadership qualities and making sure that everyone feels welcome and always wanting to like extend the olive branch to make new friends. I think yeah. those are like very important qualities. But then also like, you know, her dorkiness and like who Sunny is. So it's like the same as Anna, like definitely drew some inspiration, but also there's like a fine line that I, I didn't want to, to cross. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you for the you. question. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Anna. Hi. So when you did your small little part at the end of G4, did you just say, oh. I'm going to come back next time and I'm going to be a main character? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. That character. Oh my gosh. That character is so cute. Yeah, that was such a, I don't know. That was just such a coincidence. Like I got cast as her, and then it was like, oh my gosh, what, what can I? What? <coughs> just trying to recall how it all happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like a year before I got cast in in G five. <coughs> That's right. But that was really cool. Like I just got to do a little one off part in that, and then she was in and out, and then. I got an audition for G5 like about six or seven months later, and it was, it, it just happened. Hey, I've seen it before. Uh -huh. Sorry? Hey, I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah, days. exactly. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I know this, I know this show. I've heard of this one before. Wait, wait who's this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is Dan, Anna and uh, Jenna. Hi. Yeah, so you two are prepped, like, when you guys voice your characters, do you two prep yourself before you do it, or do you just go for it? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, can you repeat the question? When you voice your characters, do you two need to prep yourself, or do you just go for it? Oh, good question. Um, I definitely read the scripts before I go into the session, you know, to make sure I'm hitting the marks. Um, but then a lot of it is also like improv. Yeah. Like we bounce off of each other. I record with AJ a lot who plays Pip. So we have a lot of fun in that sense. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like preparation, you know, we want to make sure we're, you know, doing a good job and putting, you know, everything we've got into every time we go into the recording booth. 
Um, so yeah, definitely preparation, but it's like a good mix, it's a good balance. Yes, ditto, it's the same. Um, you read the script, you mark your lines down, you take any like brief notes about context, uh, what's happening in the scene, why, how, it, how is the character feeling in the scene, and then you go from there and you it's a lot of listening, which is great about My Little Pony, uh, these, these recording sessions because we do it ensemble for most of the part, most of it. So um, yeah, you can just, you're hearing the people around you and you're reacting and responding. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I like your hat. Thank you. Hello. I would first want to thank all three of you for taking the time out of your schedules to be here and be here in person. Okay. Oh, right. And so this question is for really all three of you. And it's about time management. Okay. So. Um, because we all have that in our lives, but you are also busy doing different projects. How? What are your tips or um, hacks uh, for keeping track of your time? Because if we're all out there playing games or whatever, how do you focus back on your project? Like, how do you keep your focus and the deadlines and all? Still trying to I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good oh, question. Such a good question. It's a great yeah. question. It's a, it's, do, you, do you have an answer? Do you have an answer? <laughs> I have a huge I answer. answer. I go for it. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> calendars. <laughs> Google Calendar. Google Calendar saved my, my life. life. Yeah. <laughs> Google Calendar is my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I also use this app called Notion. And I track everything in my life. So I, I time block. That's how I do everything. I even time block my gaming because <laughs> it's so important to me, guys. It's a problem. So, um, yeah, so I time block everything from 8 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m. every day. Wow. Wow. Um, and because of that time blocking, I usually send those calendars to my agents. And um, they kind of like, they, they are aware of all of my outdates, my out times. And a lot of it is them. Like, they organize a lot of my life for me, which is so yeah. lovely go here, go there, do this. And then once I know the dates and the times that I'm supposed to be recording and doing those sessions, I put my personal stuff or my other projects in between all of that. But for me, time blocking. All right. Do I go myself? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, okay. Because I don't have a proper answer. I am so bad at organizing stuff. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I have no organization skills, really. Like it's, my partner has to tell me to start doing this or do this, because I'm, I'm really bad at this. Um, but yeah, Google Agenda, it's the best, yeah. <laughs> because, because that's how I do my stuff. Um, on, on G5, well, it was easy to organize because uh, I was doing um, a day job, so it, I started at 9, 9 a.m. and I finished at, at 5. So I knew at that time I had to focus on my work, there was a break in between, and uh, I knew after work, after work I could go play my games, and I, <laughs> and I didn't play or draw ponies like until like midnight, which is not a good thing either. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I don't have a good uh, answer to that. <laughs> I'm in like the middle of those two. Um, I love, I, I'm organized to a certain point, Google calendars, love Google calendars, but it's like my agents are my savior. Um, yeah, they tell me when I need to go places. Um, I try to write it down in my Google calendar, and if I don't, then it gets lost in my emails. So then I call my agent and say, hey, I'm always supposed to go there again. Okay, hey, yeah, me again. Um, Google calendars. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on, on the topic of time management, uh, after some intense negotiations with our staff, we got five minutes left. Uh, we'll do speed we round. We'll, we'll, lightning yeah, round. Yeah, so round. lightning round, we've got to go for quick answers and quick questions. Okay. All right. Good Howdy, y'all. This, uh, this is a question for Imalu. Oh, okay. um, all right, so aside from Pony, um, I want to ask about your inspiration. You know, um, what, what has contributed to your current style, your render style? Maybe if you have like a mentor or something, oh. an artist you look up to? Um, I have lots of inspiration from 
Disney Pixar artist, mostly uh, Ryan Long, which is an amazing artist. He, he works on he worked on on the Big Hero Six, um, Zootopia Zootopia's character designer. So is amazing. I think his name is Brian something. I forgot. Uh, but a lot of concept artists from the industry I try to, to get my inspiration of because um, they are kind of like mentors, you know, like they are like the people you look up to because they are very talented, they are very skilled. So, yeah, uh, aside of that, uh, maybe furry artists, some furry artists that I really like. Um, yeah, you I see really, people to find a lot of talent. Yeah, <laughs> and so I really like uh, Rio concept art. So what I do for getting inspiration is I watch, well, I buy the, the art books of movies that I like, and I study them. I check out the artists that worked on it, and I I try to to study the way they draw stuff, the way they paint stuff, you know. So, but if I had a mentor, um, that would be Ryan Long. Like I really, really, really like his stuff, really. And I had, I had lots of mentors at art school as well that were very nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, mostly professional artists. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. So uh, I am becoming a voice actor. Oh, Lord ah. Batquan. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you actually know what my costume is. Oh, yeah. Yes, so yes. what advice do you have for me to be a voice actor? Uh -huh. Because it's lightning around, I think we need to one sentence. One sentence, you got it. If you can. You me first? Okay. To become a voice actor. Okay. Persevere, don't give up, and if it feels like it's not working, it is working. It's just going to take time. It takes time to get noticed and known as a voice actor. Don't give up. Use your imagination. It's the one place where you literally can be anything. You can be a cloud, you can be a stump, and it, it needs a voice. <laughs> so really use your imagination, channel into right. all that inner weirdness, and just that's go great. for it. That's fantastic advice. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Good luck. Yeah, good luck, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Hi guys, um, not sure if you, even, if you know this, but um, when it came to recasting movie voices, um, did your agents recommend you based on how you sounded, your energy, anything like that? Um, well, sort of the way it works is that your agents submit you for things that they feel like you're, you know, you're, you're right for. So cool. um, it, that's pretty much like the, the quickest answer is that sure. if they feel like you're right for it, they'll send you out, you do your, your take on, and then go from there. That's like a short swipe. Yes. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, Hi. Hi. So this is a question for you too. I'm only because we know your answer. You've been in the fandom for ages. When you were introduced to all of this, like the fandom, what was your initial impression? Oh my gosh. I can't wait to hear this. Mindless, mindless, mindless. Wow. I was stunned. <laughs> like I couldn't believe that all the, these people were here to see me and to meet me. I couldn't believe it. I, I yeah. still can't believe it. Yeah. And I, I'm so yeah. grateful to this fandom. Incredibly. Woo. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Oh, we, I think this will have to be our last question of the panel. All right. I asked this question back in 2012 to the G4 VAs. Okay. Have you had to, have, you had to take any action in a situation where you got a script that you, that the character either said or did something that you felt was, was that you said that character would never say or never do that. This actually happened to me yesterday. Yeah, it was just like a little line, like a brief line, and we, like I said it, and they were like, hmm, and I was like, hmm, and then we did like a five minute rewrite, and yeah. it was just like one word that was like, hmm, that doesn't feel very sunny, but it was not anything like super drastic because everyone on the show is so dedicated and like does their job incredibly well. But yeah, just like little one-offs here and there where it's like, oh, maybe not. The G4 VA said that they, it never happened in the first few seasons, but then later on they felt that there were times that they had to defend the character. So I guess you'll have to ask us in a yeah, year. Yeah, in a year. Well, and we hope that you'll keep telling you this convention for many years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for our C5 talent. Yeah.
all fun. Have a great convention. Make sure to promote uh, Word to Your Mother. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see why not send our autograph panels if you didn't get your question yes. answered because we will have to go there. Yes, autograph panel, yes. We will never forget. <laughs> if I can make anything weird, I'll do my own list. Ah, uh, probably. Do we have to leave? <laughs> no? Probably not, everyone is still st sitting. Yeah, I see someone sitting over there. Oh.